back in the South Australian Riverland today for a couple of days camping and fishing. So I'm back here at my usual stamping ground on the Murray River, Catarapco Creek. This was supposed to be a trip with someone else, but at the last minute they dumped me like a bad Tinder date. So it was really a case of, do I come by myself, I'm already unpacked, or do I not go at all? Easy choice really. So this junction here is one of my favourite spots. Last time I was here the water was well up around the base of those trees. I'll put a little bit of footage in to show you. And it's not looking bad. There's a beautiful eddy here that always fishes well. But I've got another campsite booked. I'm going to go and look there first, but this is certainly a, an option for me if uh, the other place doesn't produce. Well, this is campsite 31, one of my favourite spots. The last time I was here, the water was about here and I actually fished on this flat here in the campsite and did very well. Whether I do as well this time around remains to be seen. I've deployed a bit of shade. It was very hot up here yesterday, over 40 degrees, but it's cooled down. Forecast for today is low 30s and a little bit warmer tomorrow before another big heat wave so I've picked the right couple of days I think. I'll do the rest of the camp, the bedding and that later. Right now let's get fishing. Before I get lines in the water I'll get a couple of shrimp nets in because shrimps are the go-to. So I've just got dog biscuits in them. It looks like it's deep enough. Tie around this stump so I don't lose the net. That's happened before. Anywhere that there are logs is worth trying. I prefer reeds, but I don't have too many reeds here. Let's turn it around a bit. That's it. Right, anchored. Okay, both rods baited up with worms. No, not Janjuk worms. These are tiger worms. And if anyone's coming up here, I get them at the Viewpoint Cafe at Wakery. Both with about one ounce of lead. I'll keep them in fairly close where there's less current. I've already seen a couple of carp splash out there. I've also got corn, bread and the witchetty grubs that I collected in the last video I made. I might save them for a little bit later. See how the worms go for starters. So that one's that's holding all right. I'll get the other one out a little bit to the right. But again, not too far out. About out there. That'll do nicely. I had a bite literally within 30 seconds of putting those lines in the water. Right, got my first fish, actually on the other rod for the one that had the initial bite, and it's a small crap. And he's decimated my worm, so this is a problem, I might switch to corn if they're going to pester me this size. Never mind, I'm on the board. First one, start making a pile somewhere I think. Within five seconds of landing that last fish, I got the one. So clearly, they're going to eat worms. Alright, I'm not going to show you every single carp I catch that's this size. So, I might hold off until I get something a bit bigger before I start filming again. I've had half a dozen that size since I last filmed one. So I'm going to put corn on one hook, otherwise I'll have no worms left in no time. But they're biting pretty well, right from the word go.
three pieces of corn should be plenty. Got him. Oh, I don't know why I added two bites, I had two fish. So that's the first double header for the day. The contender for black carp. Very dark one. On the corn. Oh, <laughs> that was lucky. Not for him, but lucky I landed him. Well, this is about number 12. They've all been this size. And the last eight on corn. Well, the expression busier than a one arm paper hanger comes to mind. I've got two on the line between my knees, and I've got another one on this rod. I might have to retire one temporarily just to give me a bit of peace. Goodness me. Oh my goodness, it's full on. It's also very windy. So I've retired one rod temporarily. I just can't keep up. And they're just going nuts. Very busy, but not very big. Right, well that's number 20, would you believe? I've only been here an hour. So I think I'm going to have a drink break and do an impatient check on the uh, shrimp pots. I've bought plenty to drink because I knew it was going to be warm today. So let's start off with a choker cola and then check those shrimp nets. Hmm, I wonder if they sponsor small YouTube channels. The good thing about this spot is that the sun goes around that way, so a bit later on this afternoon I'll be in full shade. I mean, it's only low 30s today and there's a nice breeze and I guess if you're watching this in the northern hemisphere you're thinking what the hell is he talking about we've got snow and ice but it's pretty warm right let's check these nets if there's nothing in them with the dog biscuits I might uh, chop up one of the next carp I catch and put a bit of fish in there because that always works pretty well let's have a look been in for an hour and a bit and we have got, oh we've got a few, I'll put some water in the bucket. There's four or five in there I reckon, so that's a good start. I'll still put some fish in it though. Do I hear anything? I hear nothing. And we have maybe two. And of course the zip's not fully done up, that didn't help. They out? No. Some of them are pretty small. Oh well, to start. So there's my live shrimp holder. I'll just tie it around this post. And that will stop them frying. And hopefully I'll be able to add a few more to it as the day goes on. Okay, I need a volunteer for the shrimp net. Who's going to be first? Well, that doesn't take long. Here's my volunteer. Thank you very much. Your service is noted. Another very dark carp. On corn again. Um, once the shade moves over I might give those witchy grubs a swim I think. 
one is quite solid. This one is maybe not a lift job, even though he looks like he's pretty well hooked. I've fallen for that one before. Things have gone quiet as they often do this time of day. It's about one o'clock. So I'm going to have some beautiful Bickford's South Australian Cordial and cold water. I'm nicely in the shade now and should be for the rest of the afternoon so much more pleasant. A Rakali. Don't see that many of them on the river. Well, someone's a pretty average cast. There's a big sinker hanging in a tree. Right, I've brought a couple of witchy grubs down. I'll give them a try. It may well just result in more carp, little carp I mean, but on the other hand it might just get me a big one. They should put a nice bit of scent in the water. Let's see what we can turn up. If it's more small carp I'll save them for later. Well something's taken the witch grub, <laughs> but it's not what I was hoping for. There we go. So just to prove that they are a viable bait. The top one's been sucked dry. And I've got Charlie the baby carp on the bottom one. Another one on the grubs. Well, putting carp in there worked a treat. There's at least 10 in there. I hear shrimps. Oh yeah, there's a good swag in there. That four or five I got earlier is about to look a whole lot better. Very good. That certainly takes care of bait for our latest afternoon session. Let's make sure the lid goes on properly. Oh good, back they go, nice and cool. Right, back into it. Still hoping for that decent carp. I'm still only using one rod. I might go back to two if things don't pick up. Well. One on the rod between my knees and one here. Don't do things by halves. Get this second one in. He's a bit smaller. I think he's a lifter. Although I had a lifter half an hour ago and he broke my hook off. Let's get him off and sort the mess out afterwards. That's probably my smallest fish to date. They've all been consistently about 30 centimetres, but not this one. Right, well, I thought I had a black one before. <laughs> this is black. This is really black. Look at the colour of that. Wow. Colour variation is very interesting with carp. Now, <laughs> this is quite a good fish and he's going to go behind those trees. Oh no! Come up current. Otherwise I'm done. Let's get him out of there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. Well, this is my best fish today. I don't want to lose it. I think I've got him out. No, don't go down there. Don't go down there. It's a 
usual carp tactics, get in the crap. Get out of there, no. Not that big, but he's the biggest one I've had today, that's for sure. That was on corn in very shallow water. Yeah. Can be deceiving, but he did his best to brick me in those trees. Try to get out again too. Not your lucky day. Just over four kilos minus the net, so 3.9 kilos, close enough. There we go. Quite happy with that. 3.9 kilos, 59 centimeters and the best fish I've had today. It's funny, this spot can produce big fish only, sometimes a mix, and sometimes only small fish. And up till that one, it had only been small ones. So, we'll persevere. I'll try some witchetty grubs when it gets a little bit later in the day, because they are big fish catchers. Another really black carp that had the cheek to grab a shrimp that was just dangling in the water. Luckily, I saw it. The bed set up, I've had some tea, got a surprise carp that nearly pulled my rod in the water, just lucky I saw it. And uh, now I'll have a cup of coffee and then settle in for an evening session. shrimps kicking nicely let's see what they can do for me just got to watch these trees I've got a half decent fish here on corn though not on the shrimps of course bit of weight to it managed to keep him out of the crap yep That's the second biggest fish of the day. Well, I got something on the shrimp. Is it another carp? <laughs> I think it is. I hate it when they steal your good baits. It's like that. Bloody carp. Using all my good baits to catch these things. I really would like Callop. Not too bad. Certainly bigger than the ones I have been getting. We just had a huge hit on the shrimp. I suspect it's a carp. It is a carp. But geez, did it whack it. I reached down for the net. He went round some roots next to the bank, broke the hook off. So I never did get to see how big a carp it was, but it wasn't huge. So new hook, new shrimp, try again. 20 fish in the first hour. It's taken me another four hours to catch another 20. Right, witchetty grub and shrimp. Another victim of the grubs, but not the size I was hoping for. It's almost seven o'clock. I didn't have any more luck at the other spot, so I've moved around here. It's uh, not really a lot different, but less current. 
so I'll give this uh, maybe an hour shrimps only let's see if we can't get a native nearly had the rod ripped out and I'll guarantee you it's a carp and it is uh, another fish but oh, are you kidding me what a waste of a shrimp these bloody carp are just eating all my shrimps where are the natives I'm after another carp <sighs> so is it another carp yes of course it is ah, where are all the callop well that hit like a train but I think I know what the air yeah, of course what is it with me and carp? It's all I could catch. Any guesses? <laughs> well over 40 carp today, but nothing really of any size. Only two that were really worth talking about. And no natives whatsoever, even though I used shrimp for a good portion of the afternoon and into the evening. I'm just not sure what's going on there. I just think there's so many carp they beat them to the bait. So an hour with shrimps produced about eight or nine carp. No natives, very depressing. The sun's going to bed and shortly so am I. But I might have a cup of coffee first. And tomorrow I've got to pack up and get out of here because somebody else has got this campsite booked. And I might head down to the spot where Doug and I fished not that long ago because we did get some good fish there. Frank out.